Well, thanks for being with us here on Morning Live. Uh, let's get some analysis now. Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, wrote a letter to the ANC reminding his organization of the resolutions taken at the party's 2017 NASREC conference. Now, Ramaphosa says that a lack of integrity perceived by the public has damaged the ANC's image and the people's trust in the party. This letter comes at a time when South Africa is facing its most challenging time, not only with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also with corruption aggressively spiraling, powered by impunity. And this morning, we talked to policy analyst Professor Tiniko Maluleke from uh, the University of Pretoria, who wrote an opinion piece called My Fellow South Africans, The Season to Weep is Upon Us. And uh, I would thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, welcome, Professor Maluleke. Well, it's a pleasure speaking to you, uh, Sakina, and the viewers. So, The Season to Weep is upon us. And, and, and your sentiments in terms of why you feel that we've reached that level of despondency as South Africans, Professor? Well, you know, if anything, this letter of the president underlines my, my feeling of uh, despondency. Because Let's face it, he writes a letter to individual members of the ANC uh, at a time when you could ask why he doesn't write to the voters, why he doesn't write to you and me as citizens, and why he doesn't write to ANC leaders who are speaking at sixes and sevens at the moment. He chooses to write to the ordinary members of the ANC. Now, you could say that he is reading the Riot Act, but reading the Riot Act to who? To the leaders of the ANC by writing to the ordinary members of the ANC? Uh, so if you read this letter, uh, there is a tone of weeping about it, if I may borrow from my article. Uh, the famous South African song, struggle song, protest song of the 80s, this letter is not roaring, it is weeping. Here is a president who is weeping for his party, a party that he seems to have lost control of, so much so that he's not writing to the NEC, he's writing to ordinary members, appealing to ordinary members, almost to come to his rescue. That's how I read this. So not only is it the season for weeping for you and I, for members of the ANC, for citizens of this country, but it seems to me that the president is joining us in weeping. Now, Professor, you know, you wrote another article as well, and um, the, that one, uh, the title of which was, the ANC's NCR strategy has only one rule, and that is, thou shalt not be found out. But further on in that article, you actually say something that I thought um, was very interesting, given what the president had to say uh, yesterday. And... You spoke about, and I'm just trying to find it, where you say the president needs to bring his most honest demeanor uh, to this discourse if we were to take him seriously and, of course, if we were to take um, all of these uh, attempts to self-rectify uh, uh, by the ANC seriously. So reading that letter yesterday, did you feel that the president was himself, firstly, being honest? I think he is trying to be honest, Sakina. Let's give that to him. He is trying to be honest. He is earnest in talking to the members of his, uh, his party. The problem with that letter, though, is that if you read it towards the end of that letter, the president says, uh, let me in now. Uh, let me in. I intend to... I intend to fulfill uh, these uh, resolutions of the, the last conference of the ANC. Now, that's almost three years later. I mean, he refers to those re resolutions three years later. The question is, what has happened during the past 32 months? You know, so um, the, 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 the letter doesn't really inspire confidence in that Towards the end of it, uh, you don't know what it is. 
he wants ordinary members of the ANC to do. You don't know why until now the resolutions of the ANC about corruption have not been uh, have not been implemented. So uh, it's 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 really not a letter that inspires uh, much in terms of action. So we have to ask ourselves what is the purpose of this letter? It seems to me that this is an open letter to the leadership of the ANC rather than a letter to ordinary members of the of the ANC. It's a letter appealing for support from the general populace by an ANC president who feels under siege. And he's writing it indirectly uh, and, and, and speaking indirectly. Because three days ago, the SG wrote his own letter um, to dear comrades letter. The president writes now his dear comrade letter. Uh, here is a party that is speaking at sixes and sevens. Doesn't look to me like the SG and the president are reading from the same, uh, singing from the same hymn book. Uh, it doesn't seem to me that the provinces are doing the same thing as the president wants uh, or rather speaks about in this letter. So who is in charge of the African National Congress at this point? As you say, the SG writes a letter. One would imagine that that would be a letter expressing the views of the top six leadership of the organization, if not the broader NEC at the very least. And if the president then feels the need to write another letter uh, three days later, it does raise the question of who exactly is in charge and what sort of inertia um, this uh, leadership rift or incapacity is causing, not just within the party, but within the state as well, Professor Maluleke. Yeah, we, we almost would be justified to feel leaderless at this time as a people, as I say in my, uh, at the end of my, my fellow South Africans' uh, time to whip is upon us. We, we feel leaderless because the ANC head has many mouths. It speaks through these various mouths. Some mouths are on the side, the others are at the back of the head. You don't know who or what to listen to. The, KZN ANC reinstates Zandile Gumede in the same week. The SG writes his own letter. You have portfolio committees that are headed by people who are facing charges. Is this perhaps a letter of the president saying, I don't know what more to do? Um, and if he doesn't know what more to do, uh, then what are we supposed, how are we supposed to feel as citizens of the country? Because I disagree with those who see in this letter a riot act being read out. This is a weeping letter. It's, a, it's, a, it's an appeal for help. But is the president really that powerless? I don't know. If he feels as powerless as this letter seems to imply, uh, then we are in trouble. Then we, we might indeed be leaderless. Well, a good point to enter the conversation. Mpumelelo Mkabela uh, recently wrote an article asking, was Ramaphosa ready to govern? Uh, welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sakina. So, listening to what Professor Maluleke has to say and uh, reading uh, the article, your own article uh, you wrote, asked about whether Ramaphosa was actually ready to govern to begin with. Uh, so... Speak to us. What does this letter say to you? What does it convey in terms of the president's leadership and where he finds himself? Well, Sakina, as I pointed out in my in my article, my, my biggest concern really is that the, the president had uh, so much time to prepare for the position that he's in at the moment. Um, he has occupied various roles in both the ANC, uh, in business, and he has uh, even had time to be in the presidency in his capacity as deputy president to President Jacob Zuma. And I'm just summarizing here. There are so many roles that he has occupied. He has played a, a, a significant role in shaping the BE space uh, in the private sector as a beneficiary, but also as a policymaker uh, of those BE laws. He has sat on uh, various uh, serious boards, uh, corporate boards, made a lot of money in the process. 
And then he also sat, continuously sat in the National Executive Committee of the ANC. So this is somebody who should, in my opinion, have understood not only the country in general and its problems and challenges, he should also have thought about the solutions to those challenges. So by the time he became president, in my view, he should have been more than prepared, more prepared than Tabon Begi, more prepared than Mandela, more prepared than Jacob Zuma, because he had the privilege to be exposed to many challenges other than, the, than his predecessors. Now, he comes across as somebody who was not prepared. And I'm saying this because, as, as Prof. Malulega has pointed out, here is somebody who has executive power, uh, which is enshrined in the Constitution, but he comes across as somebody who's desperate, who doesn't know what needs to be done to deal with the challenges of the country. Of course, we are now discussing the issue of uh, corruption. There are many other problems that we're having. The country still doesn't have an economic plan that everybody understood and everyone uh, that understand and everyone subscribes to. Business formations, trade unions, civil society, many other uh, people are busy proposing all kinds of ideas. But two years down the line, the president has been, uh, since he was sworn in as president, we still don't have an, a, a, an economic uh, a plan for the country. The SOEs are still bleeding. In this letter that the prof is talking about, one of the supposedly positive things that the president yeah, no. refers to is that there's been a turnaround in SOEs, you know. new boards have been installed. Of course, it's true yeah, that there have I been think new boards that have been installed, but, but he's not saying is that there are people that he appointed into this board that have now since resigned out of desperation themselves because they don't see any support, uh, that they're not getting any support from the government, and there seems to be no uh, direction where these organizations are going. So if we look at what uh, the president wrote, at least some of it in that letter, Every cadre accused of or reported to be involved in corrupt practices must account to the Integrity Commission immediately or face disciplinary processes. Also goes on to say that the ANC should publicly dissociate, disassociate itself uh, from anyone, whether business donor, supporter or member, accused of corruption or reported to be involved in corruption. But this is contrary to the reality that we face, Mpumalela. The difficult, in fact, the biggest weakness of that uh, part you are, you, are, you are reading now is that it puts the onus uh, on the, or the responsibility on the offenders to take action against themselves. So it's saying the people that are facing charges or allegations of corruption should insulate themselves from the ANC until such time that their cases have been heard or they've been cleared. Now, Sakina, the primary reason why people are corrupt is precisely because they want to extract advantages that they don't deserve, and they want to use their positions to extract those advantages. Now, how do you expect them to voluntarily step aside? It defeats the very same purpose of their own corruption. So you can't be expecting somebody who's facing allegations of corruption to see wrong in what they've done and insulate themselves uh, uh, from the activities from which they are benefiting. It just doesn't make sense. The president should be saying, as an organization, this is what we will do to the people that are corrupt or the people that are facing allegations of corruption. And as government, this is what we are going to do to the people that are facing allegations of corruption. And he should be saying, I'm going to start with my own cabinet. Someone who violates the rules of cabinet on lockdown, you are fired. Somebody who uh, is my spokesperson is facing allegations of corruption or allegations of tender manipulation, you are fired. It should come from him, the president. Now, if he doesn't do those things, which, in my opinion, are very minimal things and are things that are within his purview as president, then he can't be expecting the ordinary members to insulate themselves, those that are corrupt. They won't do it. Well, unfortunately, gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Political analyst Professor Tinika Maluleke and Pumelelom Kabela talking to us about South Africa under the leadership of ANC and uh, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa.